Welcome back. This is video eight, the archery education series. Today we're going to deep dive into the Poncelet penetration equation. Previous video, I briefly discussed that I use this equation to estimate penetration potential distances. Today, we're going to go a little further in depth to see what is this equation? How do we break it down? How did I apply it to this situation? What are its pitfalls? So let's get into it. The Poncelet equation is based on the forces needed to penetrate a medium. And specifically the solution that I used was a solution for a non-deforming elongated rod. That is very similar to an arrow with a couple of exceptions. We have a broadhead on the tip and the arrow is able to bend or deform. And that's where our penetration numbers will vary from this estimation from the real world. First, let's really get into what is this Poncelet equation. Well, it's a combination of terms. So when we're talking about what's the force or energy necessary to cause penetration, there's a couple things we have to look at. First, what is the force needed to break bonds of material? So for tissue, this would be, what's the force of cutting? What does the broadhead need to do to separate that tissue or cut the bonds of the tissue? Well, extensive testing of this has been done and it's found that generally the force needed to break bonds is three times the yield strength times the area, and this is a time average derivative. That's kind of what this looks like here on the screen. Getting to the next part is the arrow now has to pass through this medium, which means it has to push tissue out of its path to continue on its, on its forward trajectory. If it doesn't move the tissue, it won't go forward. The tissue has to move out of the way. And it looks very similar to drag. And that's what we have here for the resistive force needed to move tissue from the Poncelet equation. A third term that in this case isn't something that gets applied would be friction. And that's because tissue, although it may close down on an arrow, it is very well lubricated. So it provides very minimal friction on the shaft. And this is why some tests out there where we see penetration into mediums that provide a lot of friction, the friction component becomes overwhelming to the rest of the equation. Then what you're really testing is how much friction can I apply to stop the arrow? So the combination of these forces is what the Poncelet equation looks at to then try to estimate a depth, an overall depth that could be achieved of your projectile. The particular solution that I used, as I discussed at the beginning here, is this one here on the screen. And so from that, what I did is, how can we apply this formula as an estimation and really look at the nose of the projectile, in this case, the broadhead, to get variations of how the formula may be applied? Because a lot of these areas are a time average area, we can look at certain parameters of the broadhead to say in the instance of the broadhead as it penetrates, what would be an average of certain values? I also considered a sharpness factor, which would essentially be the, the pointedness of the blades. Now that comes in to our force needed to break bonds, but not our force needed to move tissue because the overall size of the blade would have to be accounted for to move tissue. Then going a little bit further in depth, another thing to consider is how does the impact force, the initial force vary due to that shape of that broadhead? And that's where I think we're getting a lot of variation, not only in archery in the real world, but in the numbers, that impact force is what we need to really consider to ensure we have minimal deflection of our projectile minimal bending. We want that arrow to continue on its path. Any deflection due to failure, as I discussed in the previous video of buckling, of that shaft wanting to bend on impact greatly reduces penetration value because it not only changes where your mass momentum of the arrow and that vector is directed towards, but also the ability of that shaft to do work on the medium. So that's what I looked at from this Poncelet equation. Running the numbers, I looked at a lot of different broadhead shapes, as well as energy of the bow. So I had a high energy 87 foot pound bow, a low energy 48 foot pound, and wanted to see what variables controlled penetration the most. As most would assume, the broadhead played the largest role. So our broadhead selection should be our number one consideration for our arrow projectile. You can use whatever broadhead you want. It doesn't matter to me. I would stress that one with a cutting 
tip forward that is able to penetrate the hide and cut the hide first rather than bend and stretch the hide. Like a field tip would bend and stretch the hide till it ruptures where a cutting tip would sever the tissue. If I kept a lot of factors consistent and only changed particular variables, for example, if I kept all the broadhead characteristics and the outside geometry the same and was simply changing mass of the arrow, how does that affect penetration? What I've done is I've considered if we were to switch, so if we were using a 350 grain arrow, what percentage increase would we get? If we had a 450 grain arrow, what percentage increase would we have? And where would our increase be with a 550 grain arrow? So I stepped it up in increments. All right, so let's look at the 350 grain arrow first. If we were to use a 350 grain arrow, by increasing 100 grains to 450, and assuming everything else stays constant, as well as the shaft's ability to absorb the impact, we would get about a 12.5% increase in penetration over the 350 grain arrow. If we stepped up to 550, it would be almost 23% increase in penetration. And this is for an 87 foot pound kinetic energy bow. If we were to change again to an even heavier weight, let's say 7, 750, well, we'd get an ability to penetrate 38% more. So mass does play a role. However, as I mentioned in a previous video, our goal is to pass through the animal. We don't need anything more. However, the actual amount of energy needed to penetrate animal varies greatly depending on where you hit the animal. So if our consideration is to have the greatest performing projectile, we should consider weight. It should be somewhere in our consideration. Now, if you're shooting a high energy bow, maybe the weight isn't as important because you have so much more available energy to penetration. But if you are shooting a lower energy bow, weight might be a more important factor for you. So let's consider that. What is the advantage for a 48 pound kinetic energy bow? What's interesting here, it's not as significant increasing weight as it is for the higher kinetic energy bow. And this has a lot to do with the velocity that that lower energy bow produces. So if we were at 350 grains on a 48 pound kinetic energy bow and jump to 450, we'd get a 10% increase. If we jump to 550, it'd be 18.8, almost 19%. And if we jumped all the way to 750 grains, we'd be about 30% increase, almost 10% less than the high kinetic energy bow at 87 foot pounds. That's an interesting thing. And like I said, that all plays on the, in, on the impact velocity that the arrow is at. Because that produces such an impulse as it hits the animal, it greatly reduces our penetration ability if the arrow is going really fast. Let's consider from this chart where I would select a mass value if I was starting with mass of an arrow. And generally when we're selecting arrows, the first thing we can kind of look for is our grains per inch and our components. The first and most important thing to me from all these calculations is stiffness. If your arrow fails or begins to bend on impact, your penetration is gonna be greatly reduced. So I would prioritize stiffness over mass. A couple ways to improve stiffness and with column buckling, front end stiffness becomes the most important. You could increase mass at the front of the arrow would be better than increasing mass over the entire length. I would select from these charts between 450 and 550 grains provides a lot of advantages for both speed to target, time to target, speed of the arrow shaft if you're wanting to shoot longer ranges. And if you go to 550 grains, you'll be within 10% of a 700 grain arrow. And this holds true from 20 yards to 80 yards on a penetration potential of a 550 grain arrow. Now, like I said in the beginning, stiffness is the most important. Along with that is our broadhead selection. And I've talked about that. We should have a cutting first broadhead because that'll greatly reduce the stiffness needed or the potential of the shaft buckling because you're gonna reduce that initial impact force. So these are just numbers for you to consider when you're looking at what kind of arrow system do I wanna build. So to kinda of wrap up a conclusion here, my suggestions to everyone, select a well-rounded arrow. My personal opinion is something around 500 grains and tune your bow really well so that the arrow is hitting square to the animal. Here's the numbers. Mass, of course, produces a better penetrating projectile. Stiffness is king, especially if you're gonna impact hard bone, tough hides, 
or if you want to use a larger cutting diameter broadhead or maybe a less efficient broadhead, but maybe it produces a better wound channel. Prioritize stiffness. So moving forward, guys, we have some wind tunnel testing coming up. I'm going to include a little snippet at the end of this video of what that testing will look like. We're going to be testing every fletching that I have. I've got feathers and fletchings and the idea of the test is to compare the correcting ability of the fletching or the feather. Also still working on accumulating some broadheads. We're going to do some testing there. Specifically, we're going to be looking at that initial force required to penetrate different mediums. We're going to be using leather, foam, and maybe a couple others. I appreciate everyone's support. It's been overwhelming. I can't, uh, can't thank everybody enough. So enjoy these videos you know, consider liking and subscribing. We've got a lot more coming up and we're going to do as much testing as we can to figure out what matters and what doesn't. Till next time.